This video is about epilepsy genetic testing. And the reason why we wanted to focus on this topic is because March has an Epilepsy Awareness Day. And recently, we presented this information to a group of doctors in commemoration of Rare Disease Day. And we actually focused on epilepsies. So what you see here is four different target groups that we typically divide genetic testing into and epilepsy DNA testing would fall under the category of undiagnosed diseases group. For the undiagnosed diseases group you would resort to DNA testing under couple circumstances. Number one would be if your standard medical approaches fail to provide you with a clear clinical diagnosis. In such circumstances you can resort to DNA testing in an attempt to identify the condition, and such approach will yield results somewhere between 25 to 75% of the time, depending on the type of test used or the facility that is being used. So we're just going to average it here as approximately 50% yield rate. The other time you would use DNA testing in such circumstances would be to actually confirm a diagnosis especially if you derived your diagnosis through the process of elimination as opposed to using specific molecular approach. Let us take a look at some of the type of conditions that could be confirmed with genetic testing. And right on top, you see hypercholesterolemia. Next could be cardiovascular diseases, and this is a very broad group of conditions as is neurodevelopmental diseases. This encompasses many different conditions and that includes autism syndrome disorders, which yes, you can test for genetically to help identify specific conditions or epilepsies. There is one more condition that I did want to focus on before we start going into details with epilepsies and that is a specific type of diabetes that is monogenic, meaning it's actually inherited through mutations in a specific gene. And this type of diabetes called maturity onset diabetes of the young is typically underdiagnosed because most of diabetes is just diagnosed as either type 1 or type 2. So this is also an important type of DNA test. In terms of epilepsy syndromes, I'm not sure if you know this, but the vast majority of epilepsies have genetic component as one of the root causes. And it is estimated that approximately 70 to 80% of them have genetic mutations that lead to the symptoms of these conditions. This is still widely underappreciated fact because epilepsies often are not tested broadly for what genetic conditions might be causing them. But let me show you how many genes we already know of that are involved in causing epilepsies. Here you see a list of all of the different genes that we can already clinically associate with the different epilepsy conditions. And we're talking about 378 genes across entire full human genome. To give you a perspective, Alberta Health Services doesn't have a specific panel to test for epilepsies. And therefore, if they ever do any DNA testing for epilepsies, they would have to outsource for this type of test. And such panel would never test this many genes. So this gives you some example of the type of disparity that can occur in public healthcare as opposed to what DNA testing can provide. And as I already previously mentioned, epilepsies can be divided into many different categories. And the advantage of DNA testing is the fact that it allows you to start 
potentially identifying specific condition involved. And that's important because this can determine how such conditions should be managed and also more importantly, how such condition should be treated with specific medications. As I previously already alluded to, epilepsies fall under the category of neurological disorders, and this category encompasses many more conditions. This can include intellectual disabilities, I already previously mentioned autism, but it can also include movement disorders, even also brain malformations, also neuromuscular disorders, and other neuropathies. And believe it or not, all of these could be tested for genetically with DNA sequencing. And if there are nearly 400 genes involved in conditions that lead to seizures or epilepsies, then you can appreciate that many more genes would be involved to encompass all of these neurological disorders. And indeed, that is what we see. Here you see the list of all of the different genes that could be tested for in full genome sequencing test across all of the different neurological disorders. And these are the genes that are currently clinically verified to be tested for. And we're looking at approximately 1,600 different genes. So you can appreciate the value of DNA testing and being able to identify specific conditions to allow more targeted management, including epilepsies. So what type of DNA testing is available to you? There are two predominant approaches. Number one is the use of gene panels. Gene panels are the type of DNA tests where you select for very specific genes to test for your condition of interest. And these are predominantly used in medicine. The reason for that is because by being more targeted, they are cheaper option. And the primary advantage of gene panels is the fact that this is where the vast majority of medical experience resides because they are used most frequently. The other type of test that is available to you, on the other hand, is full genome sequencing. And the advantage of full genome sequencing is the fact that it sequences your DNA completely. This allows you to test for additional areas of your genome that might not be included in the gene panel. And this therefore allows for research opportunity to find for NOVA mutations that have never before been seen, including new genes or in areas of the DNA that's outside of genes. Another advantage of the genome sequencing is that it allows you to look at different types of DNA mutations that gene panels will typically not test for. Specifically, we're talking about mutations referred to as structural mutations, which typically involve very large segments of DNA. And finally, another advantage of full genome sequencing is the fact that you only need to test once in your lifetime, you obtain your entire sequence, and this allows the patient to use that sequence for reanalysis for the remainder of their lifetime. So as new knowledge accumulates, this allows you to always recheck for the latest updates in medical information because you capture all of the DNA information upfront in the original test. Hopefully this video helped you understand how DNA sequencing can be a valuable tool in attempting to resolve undiagnosed disorders. If you require access to such DNA testing, you can contact Merogenomics. Alternatively, you can also talk to your doctor and ask for a referral to a genetic counselor. We wish you all the best 
in your genetic journey.